Hi everyone, Sandra Saad here with a video introduction to the course layout. Um, first, I want to say that what you look at on your screen is obviously going to be a little bit different than what I have because I have the instructor view, so don't freak out if it looks just a little bit different. Um, I will kind of point out the differences. But as we go down through here, here's the course information, obviously, and everything below that is what I refer to as the course menu. The first thing you'll see is announcements. Announcements is always the opening page. Let me go back here. This is what you'll always see when you open the course. Always opens to announcements. Here you can see the first announcement that I posted back on January 6th. These announcements will always be here. I don't erase them. I just add on so you'll always see the most recent announcement. In addition to that, every time I post an announcement, I'll send you an email. So there's a way to do that in Blackboard where when I post, I can say email the students and I do that every time. Getting started is, of course, where you found this video and the complimentary document that goes with it. Basically, I'm kind of presenting from that for you. So that way you have an introduction to the course layout in both video and written format. I'm also going to put in getting started your introductory blog. So this will be the first blog that you do. And it's just a written way to introduce yourself to your classmates. I'll start it with a blog introduction of myself, and you'll just add on. And um, that's part of your introductory activities is to complete that blog. So look for that here in getting started. Syllabus, let me open that up for you and show you what you'll see. Syllabus will always be here. This is the official document that is the course layout. It has grading criteria, you know, withdrawal policy and things like that. Very important document to look at. It's also an introductory activity, so you will be asked to read this document and send me an email, which I'll show you in just a second how to send me an email. You'll send me an email saying that you have read and understood the syllabus. Um, that is worth points. Um, it's an important thing for me to know that you have read through it and do understand how the course is laid out. The course calendar, if I click on this, here's the link to it. This is a wonderful document that shows you the start and end dates for everything. So it's very important that you stay attuned to this so that you get your work done in a timely manner and you don't miss any deadlines. This document is here for you. You never should need to email me and say, when is something due, etc., because this calendar has it all. In addition, with every assignment I post, I always emphasize the end date. Instructor contact information. Again, a link here. It literally just tells you how to contact me. The best way for you to contact me is via email. I am very attuned to email. I answer, you know, throughout the day. Um, and every time you send me an email in this course, I get a notification also in my KCTCS email. So I can't miss it. Um, the way that I would like for you to email me, as you can see here in the course menu, is using this email function in the course menu because it keeps all of our correspondence in one place, which is very important. If I want to show you how to do this. You click on email. You start at the top with create message. Click on two. Here's all your classmates. You can email them as well should you want to. But if you come down through here, you're going to have to find me. There I am, instructor. Click on my name. Pull me over to the right. Come down here and put in your subject. Type in your email message in the box provided. And then when you're ready, come down here and simply click Submit. And I'll be able to get your email message. Textbook. This is where you will find your textbook for the semester. The textbook is a reading resource only, meaning that you will not be doing any activities, any quizzes, anything in the textbook. You will only be reading the chapters. Everything else is involved or in quizzes and blogs, which I'll show you here in a minute. Group assignments. I don't have anything posted in there yet, but you will be divided out into groups. 
in order to watch each other's videos. And um, once you have a group assignment, every time you post a video, you're going to post your group number and the video number. And that helps us because they all end up in voice threads and we'll need to pick those apart for each assignment. So we need those clearly labeled with group number and video number. And obviously I'll be giving you more directions when we get to that. Now the work of the semester is divided out into modules. There are four modules. We'll be doing module one and module two before spring break, module three and module four after spring break. While you will see these headings in Blackboard, you won't find any content in them because they're timed. So the only thing you're going to be able to see that has content is going to be Module 1. Let me open that up for you. And again, remember, your view will probably look a little bit different because you're looking from a student view. With each module, I'm going to provide an overall description of what we're doing. It has the dates, start and end dates, start and end dates, as the work is broken out, these dates will go back here and match that course calendar, so they will be complementary. And then as you want to do the work, get this out of the way, as you want to do the work and you come on down, all of it's here. Like for January 16th through February 2nd, it says chapter work opens at noon on January 16th closes at 11.59 p.m. on February 2nd, read chapters 1 through 3 in the textbook, then complete each related chapter quiz, 20 points each, and each related chapter blog, 20 points each. Where do we find that work? Well, the textbook we find here, I would go read chapter 1, come back to this module, come down here and complete the chapter 1 quiz, and the chapter 1 blog. The chapter 1 quiz is obviously tied to the chapter that you have just read. The chapter one blog, I labeled it that just so that it's, you know, we have a correlating blog, but it is not necessarily related to that specific chapter info. It's a lot of connections and websites and things that I've found across the years that, you know, put some interesting activities into the course. So you can literally do all of one, two, and three blogs all at once if you want to, if you like to get those out of the way, and then come back and work your way through the quizzes, literally however you like to do it. Um, but the blogs are just fun activities that are all worth points, so they're very important. Okay, so now that I've talked about the chapter blogs, these are two things, links you're not going to see at all, video journals or assignments because they are going to be appearing um, in the modules. There will be links and it will appear there every time. So you will not be seeing these two links at all. Tests, you will be seeing. Tests are where you will find only your pre-test at the beginning of the semester and your post-test at the end of the semester. The last introductory you have is to take the pre-test. So you will click on this. Uh, the pretest is 50 multiple choice questions. You're not to use any other resources to help you. Um, you do the best you can, read each question possible. You earn points for taking the test. Your score does not matter at all. Um, it simply gives us a base for learning and knowledge here at the beginning of the semester. Homework help, wonderful resource. I'm going to open this up for you. On-campus homework help through ACE. You have a couple of papers in this course. Papers are graded. Our writing skills are very important. So if you st struggle with academic writing, or even if you don't, but just want someone to double check your work, ACE in all of our campus libraries is a wonderful place to go. It shows you where they are on each of our three campuses, um, main campuses. But then also, if you can't make it to campus or if you're strictly an online student, you can click on this link for on-campus homework help. It will open up a, a link that will allow you to make contact with ACE and to upload your paper for their review. They, in turn, then can um, proofread and edit and email it back to you. So there's no reason not to use this resource. The only thing I would emphasize is that you can't 
wait until three hours before your paper is due and contact ACE. They're very busy. I would encourage you to give them at least a couple days notice so that they can get it done and get it back to you in a timely manner to make your corrections so that you can then upload it for a grade. But this is a valuable resource I would encourage you to use. Okay, moving back to our course menu. So we've talked about homework help. View My Grades is where you will go to see all your grades throughout the semester. And then Help, this last button, is simply a link into Blackboard. If you're having some, some issues and things like that, you might look at that. Um, it's there to be helpful. Um, obviously, I'm not a computer ace, so I can't be very helpful in that area, but hopefully you could find some student resources that would prove of benefit to you. Okay, so I've introduced you to the course layout. I've discussed your three introductory activities, the introductory blog, reading the syllabus and emailing me, and completing that pretest. I'll also put a reminder about those in announcements too. So hopefully this is helpful to you. This video will be here permanently as a resource, and hopefully, you know, between that and the uh, complimentary document that's posted and getting started, you'll have everything that you need. Um, to help you maneuver through this course.